Hey everyone, Chad again here. Today I'm going to try to go over this Miterfold top library that I created for Mosaic software. In case you've never used Miterfolds before, they're pretty simple if you have a CNC. A J style, like here, which is the style I use most often. An L style, which is a standard fold. And a couple of P's here, which is kind of unique for like an end-to-end -end bench or a shelf maybe. The main reason I made this miter fold library is for making countertops and bench tops. The waterfall ends were a bonus. Simple L waterfalls, as well as the J style. All four sides can be finished with these, as well as the countertops. So let's take a good look at this Retro MF Tops V1 library. Products. Basically broke into a few sections. We've got countertops, bench tops, a couple shelves, and then we've got these waterfall tops. If you look at the first two letters, miter fold and WF for waterfall. The first letter is what type of top it is. So here's a J. If you go down here, there's an L. And the bench is the same thing, J and L. And there's a P. And that's an unfinished end only. Shelves is a couple of these, just kind of as a something just in case. And then the waterfall tops, same thing, J, 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 and L's. Now the last part, the miter fold tops, UE, unfinished end, that's pretty obvious. FL would be finished left, and then we got finished right, finished ends, and then we have finished ends all, that would be the back as well. And that's going to be both for the J's and the L's. Both sides. The bench tops, see we got the same thing here, except we don't have finished backs, obviously. We have finished ends. Um, the waterfall tops, now this is pretty unique. So you have the J top, unfinished end, L. So that means waterfall left. Finished end. Both sides, unfinished end, all. And then we got a finished end, all. So that's going to be then you have the right side. Then you have the same thing for the L's. So if you don't want a full return on your miter fold, you can do something simple like this. Let's take a look at one of these parts once. MF waterfall. Click on either edit shape or the picture. And there we are. This would be the leg over here, the top, the finished end front and back. So on these, one way to keep track of you're doing things right is if you're inside of here, you can right click on things. Do not left click anywhere on these points or lines because they'll probably move and you'll probably lose your formulas. But here if I click this, you can see that's my top length and it goes 24 there. So that's correct. Another little trick here is you can turn on your grid and this will help you to understand better. You can see there I have an inch and a half. A couple of things to make clear right away is I have the height stretching turned off. So when, we, when you drop this into a job, it doesn't go 34 and a half inches tall. It'll stay at that locked height. So obviously you can adjust the height on these. On a J, you would obviously want to be at least twice as thick as your material thickness. So I want to show you a trick real quick here on this. Let's go to your settings. Materials, door template. For everything except the waterfall tops, you can adjust the height as simple as stretching. Let's just do this here. So if you look at this, now my thickness is at 0.73. Something that's kind of cool is you can actually go point seven three plus point seven three. Okay, go back into it again. There, pulls up at point, or 1.46. Obviously you can do the math, but that's the idea. If you don't want to have any gap on your fold, it's a good way of doing it. Again, if it's thicker than 0.75, account for that as well. So, some things play together nicely in Mosaic, and SketchUp is one of those things. These are models, so these do not stretch very accurately, but we can take care of that very quickly and easily in SketchUp if you have that. And I recommend getting SketchUp if you do any sort of 
custom stuff in mosaic. So the thing about these tops now, if you look at them, it says the height is 36. And of course we can adjust the height here. I'm saying you can't adjust this height of the face by this tab. So I would set this height as your height you want your countertops at, whether it's 36, 35 and three quarter. And then you can adjust one of your parameters, which would be this waterfall face thickness. And that would adjust this edge and this edge. Now the thing is this model will not scale according to that, but I have this model set up at an inch and a half so let's just place a countertop real quick here. Let's delete this one. Let's go to our MF Tops library. And here I'm just gonna want a countertop, not a bench top or a waterfall. Let's go to a J and I wanna finish my left side. So FL, you can kind of see in the preview what it is. You can drag that over here. This is gonna be the depth of your base cabinets that is set up in your room settings. So you can see my base cabs are 24 deep. So if I just go back out here, I'm at 42 wide. Let's just say I want to have this overhang. Let's just go an inch, we'll go 43. And let's just say my depth of this, I want to overhang an inch. So I'll make the depth 25 to make it easy. And there it is. Same thing for a bench top. Let's just delete this one here. Take a look at it. Let's go down to our bench tops, unfinished end, drop it in there, pull it out. And the depth is going to come in at that 24 again because that's our base cabinet depth. So we'll just drop this down to 19 and there we are. Let's add a waterfall top here. I'll show you quick how this works. Let's do a J again. And the L, the last letter is which side the leg is on. So. So on the left side, that's what we want. So we're down, just down to a J and we want an L. So what do we want? I want an unfinished end because I have a wall there. So if you look at the preview, you can see there. So let's just do the unfinished end. We'll pull this on. Here's what happens here. It's going to snap to the countertop. Just drop your elevation down to zero. What we have to do is just know how thick our top is going to be and just make this that much thicker on the side. So I have a 60 inch width here. Let's just say I have an inch and a half top or inch and a half edge thickness. So I want this 61 and a half. So let's just go 61.5. Okay, let's do the depth here, 25. We can't bump this over because it's competing here. So what we can do is use this, use this window here and just make this number zero and it'll bump over to the side. Now again, this is a model, so I can adjust this to an inch return, I can adjust this to a foot return, so keep that in mind. I've heard some people mention that you can use miter folds for solid surface, so let's take a look at this elephant in the room here. How is this model looking right? I'll show you why. Let's delete this here. I'll show you what happens here. I'm going to pull in a waterfall. Let's pull in a J. Let's pull in an L. And we're looking for a right side now. You can see how big my model is. Well, this is a small piece here, so it's going to look kind of silly. Now I can turn my width stretching on now. You can see what happens. This was a 24 inch cabinet. This I was gonna keep at an inch and a half. So let's make this 25.5. So what's kind of crazy now, as you can see, it does not look right. And I'll show you how to fix that right now, if you have SketchUp. If not, unfortunately, this is, this will cut accurate, it just doesn't look accurate. So, so here's what we do to modify this quickly in SketchUp. We want this to be 25.5. We'll worry about the scribes later. That doesn't really matter. So what we do is go to info, go to our SketchUp model, click view SketchUp. Okay. And it's going to open SketchUp over on my other screen here. I'll pull this in. 
we want to keep this point here and keep this point on the red and the blue axis. So press T for tape if you're a newbie. Go up here, drag across, and don't click anything yet. Press 25.5, enter. And you'll get your little dot there. Now go to your arrow, select this section here, press M for move. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and just drag this to our point. I don't know if there's a way to actually snap to that, but that looks pretty good. So then if you want to, I would delete the guide, go to edit, delete guides, and then the most critical thing here is press save as, file, save as. And it's going to pull up that top. We don't want to overwrite that. So we're going to take that and go 25.5 on the end, save. From there we can close this. We're still goofy. We're going to go to browse. Look for our anomaly here, 25.5. And there we are, we're good. Everything's scaled back to inch and a half. And that's how easy that is to just modify something quickly in SketchUp. I'm gonna show you something quick too. Let's just say you wanna expand your library. You could take these waterfall tops and copy some of that into a bench top. So you could take this thing here if you wanted to and just do the same thing for the bench top. You know, drop this, this height down here to 18, go into your model, take your tape measure, go to the bottom, go up 18, 1, 8, enter, grab this thing, press M, and just drag this down until we get that top edge on our guide point. And there, that one snaps to it, so that's cool. File, save as, waterfall, L bench. Close it out. What I'm going to do here now, before I screw this up, is bench. I don't want to save over this now until I change the name. So we'll go back into this, uh, go down to your bench here, open that up, and there you are. And depending on how this library goes, I may end up with a version 2 that has more models. Anyways, let's get into some of the parameters and see how this works. So we could add scribe to the back. All the time maybe put a quarter inch on there maybe we could put a quarter inch on each unfinished end so that'd be like this cabinet would each get a each get a quarter inch this one would get a quarter inch on this side this one would get a quarter inch on this side um, the waterfall leg at floor over here you could add a quarter inch if you want or half inch whatever you want waterfall face thickness this is set up for 1.5 that's for this front edge and side it's not for the P shelf the P shelf adjust at the product editor. And remember, this model won't scale. So if you adjust this to three inches, it'll still look like an inch and a half there. So, and then here's all the parts. It's got front and back fillers, mid fillers. So front and back filler length slop. This is the back filler. So if you wanted this shorter, maybe take off an inch or a half inch on these. This slop offset from rear, that's how far back you want to place the back filler. And it doesn't matter too much if you don't have mid fillers, but if you have mid fillers, it'll automatically account for all of these parameters. So just keep this in mind. I would probably put this at about three quarters to an inch. Add a back filler. So it's set up out of the gate with a back filler at four inches. And some of these are showing that, the model is showing it. So front filler on, width, and mid filler. So the mid fillers are going front to back. It's just gonna figure out the, the length based on your return or your front filler and back filler. It's gonna figure out all the lengths and account according to all of these things. So take a look at this uh, P-bench here. Just say I want this height to be, let's just turn on the height stretching here. Let's just go down to five. Now let's make this, uh, let's just make it 18 deep. Take a look at this, 3D. You'll see it's distorted a little bit there, but let's edit this once. 
This is what it looks like out of the gate. So right now it's set up at four inches from here to here. And you can check this in the optimizer if you drag this in. It's four inches here to here. This is the top side of the bench. Then it drops five inches and it's going back four inches. That's that bottom miter fold return going back four right now. And then this part goes all the way up and in. Um, you can measure this here. One, two, three, four, five. This one's one, two, three, four to the back, plus a little bit of dado slop. Let's do a couple modifications on this. And right now, I'm still set up out of my, out of my uh, job parameters at a four inch return on the bottom. So I'm 18 inches deep. The mid fillers are gonna be 14 inches long. Miter full return bottom front set to two on this because I don't want this to be four inches deep. Let's go to two. Now that's going to be 16. So that's just automatically adjusting. And what it's doing there is it's measuring from the back here to this back edge after that's all glued up or not glued up after that's all assembled. Again, you can look at it here and see how this changes. That's now two inches, five inches, two inches, and then the remainder drops in. So that's how the P bench works. That return on the P bench is set up with the miter fold return bottom front. Let's just say we want to cut this waterfall top here. I'm inch and a half tall right now. My waterfall face thickness, so that works fine. This one five, and then make the fillers at three inches wide. So um, we could do some slop offset on this maybe. Just set this up. We'll put some scribe on this. On the end, let's add a half inch. At the floor, we'll add a half inch. Just leave that there. Let's go okay. Go back into that cabinet. Look at our parts. Now we got no front fillers, so we got no front leg filler or no front top filler. We have five mid fillers. I figured I wanted to have one, two, three, four, five. And I got one back filler for the leg and one top filler. So that back filler is essentially just gonna go all the way from this point here to there, minus the link slop. And it's going to go from the floor up underneath that, you know, minus any scribes as well. So let's just pull this into the optimizer. This is N1. We'll drag that in here. And we're going to have a few parts here. Let's go to optimize. Um, part spacing could change this to 13 16 just because of our V bit. Now you can see there, I have a, I'm using a 10 foot sheet because this is a little over. Standard size. Let's just look at this in 3D here. So that's how that's cutting that. This is the leg. It's gonna fold up, fold around, fold in. This part here will go on the back. This here will go on the back leg. And these mid fillers will go in between here. Now if I measure this, the tape measure here, I could go from this point here, and that's four inches. This is inch and a half from this point to here and then my top is going to be the distance here plus scribe and it's going to be from here plus scribe so you can measure here you can confirm all these that's plus half inch scribe same thing for the leg it was 36 plus half inch scribe so 36 and a half that's how that works It'd be really nice if you could turn that on the bottom here have a wire frame we could actually tape where it's got to be taped so hopefully that'll update in the future see I'm using a 91 bit here it's gonna cut through that I got it set up for two passes right now it's gonna cut the outside so that's pretty much it waterfall tops are pretty much fully accessible mosaic now it really helps to have SketchUp for the models to tune those models but if you're just doing standard tops, left and right, you know, front and back even, J tops, L tops, you don't even have to worry about it. But if you want to do the legs, SketchUp does make it nicer. So guys, let me know if you have any questions, comments. If you guys know how I can adjust these models so the waterfall texture is accurate, let me know. I'd love to get that changed in the future. Until next time, thumbs up. Adios.